Hello, welcome to another edition of Chase the Veil. And today we are talking about whether or not you provide a complimentary meal for your vendors. And there's a lot of discussion about that, a lot of opinions, but that's what we're going to handle today. First, I'd like to introduce everybody. Mike Wise from Mike Wise Photography. Krista Tharp with Tharp Events and Blissfully Simple Wedding Planning. Chef Joanne with Rosie's Catering in the Continental Ballroom. Jeff Hodson from Excite Music and publisher for Web Plan 101. And I'm Jennifer Rossi with Rossi's Catering in the Continental Ballroom. So we have a lot of opinions on whether you feed your vendors, do you provide a complimentary meal at the reception for your vendors? Um, they're there all day, what do you do? Do you offer something or don't you? Uh, I'll start. Um, I know that a lot of brides, when they hear that they should or whether well, they should or shouldn't do uh, vendor meals, they're thinking, I'm paying them, I shouldn't have to feed them at the same time. I, I understand that none of us expect a $30 a plate meal. However, the people that are with you all day long, photographers, DJs, wedding planners, videographers that are there from 8 o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock, midnight, you know, in the evening, they need something to eat. And a lot of times we don't get much time to eat if we do. Um, so it's something to really, really think about and, and, and obviously I'm like feed your vendors uh, because it's just a kind thing to do. A lot of caterers will do it as a professional courtesy like these wonderful ladies here but unfortunately there are some that do not which is unfortunate and they will either charge uh, sometimes the same amount and if that is the case when you talk to your caterers I would suggest about getting a box lunch something that's less expensive for us something that we could get up and go um, and sometimes you could talk to them about a discounted rate but I definitely uh, you need to feed them. Yeah. I, I agree. I, I think the biggest thing for me is, is that with the limited time frame, I don't want to leave the reception to go and, and eat if it's not provided. And, and then also just I want it to be something that is, like you said, very quick mm -hmm. and allows me to basically eat for about five minutes and then get right back in case something is hard, you know, started up. Um, I don't want to be in another room ready to, uh, to eat and then have something going on beyond that. We talked about communication with, with the DJ and the photographer. If you know, if we're comfortable and, and working together a lot, then that makes a big difference. But uh, if you don't have that connection, I don't want to be in the other room eating, and then all of a sudden I hear, "Oh, we're gonna start the first dance," and, and I'm thinking, "Wait a minute, I, I'm in the other room, and I don't want that to happen." So. Well, at the same time, with communication. I don't want to be with a photographer that doesn't communicate, and I didn't know they left the room to get right. something to eat. The bride wants to start the toast, but yet we don't know where the photographer and videographer are because they've been provided a meal in another room, but yet no one told anyone what was going on. So right. communication is a big part. Um, one thing I will say is if for any reason a vendor meal is not going to be provided, let your vendors know ahead of yes. time. Yeah. Um, well, I can stick a candy bar and a, you know, and a pop in my bag. Um, you want to communicate with us because, I mean, if we're hungry and we need to eat, the last thing you want us to do is pick up the phone and have a pizza delivered to the reception. Um, I'm not saying that we would do that, but there probably but are, there are vendors, vendors that will. That yeah. would. Yeah. Um, and I can't imagine anyone being expected to work for four, six, eight hours or more without being able to leave the facility and get something to eat. And we can't leave. We're there for the bride. There's nowhere we can go. Um, so either the food needs to be available and provided to us or we're going to need to bring it with us. Mm -hmm. that, that's the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. um, and not just the food, drinks. And I don't mean alcohol, I mean water, soft drinks, mm -hmm. something to keep us going. Um, because we need to be able to go and get a little bit of caffeine rush to make it. You know, your reception was supposed to stop at 10, but here we are at 1130, still going strong. Well, I, as a DJ, I need some caffeine at that point. And you're you know? constantly talking. I mean, yeah, it's, you are the I, MC I of have, the event. You know, something to a glass of water. Um, sometimes I might get a pitcher of water and have it sitting there with a glass, just so I don't have to keep getting up and going to refill it. I'm fine with that, but there has to be some communication from our client to us, letting us know what is going to be provided mm -hmm. or not provided. Communication with the caterers themselves to know, you know, are they going to provide it? Um, or, you know, did they just, unfortunately, sometimes tell the bride they're going to provide it and then we never see it. Mm -hmm. That happens as well. Mm -hmm. And I would have that discussion with your caterer, you know, what is your policy with vendors? Because like us, we, as professional courtesy, we provide a meal. Now, we provide a meal within reason, it's, you know, don't bring your wife and her friend and 
<laughs> you know, their girlfriend and, you know, so on and so forth. And now we've got eight people who are doing nothing at the reception but having this meal. Um, but it is a discussion to have with your vendors, I mean, with your caterer, to find out what is their policy. Do they provide complimentary drinks? And, you know, our opinion is you've just paid a pretty nice price for, you know, your reception and your meal. The caterer probably can throw in a couple of meals. Um, some drinks complimentary to your vendors. I mean, it's good as a vendor. It's a good for uh, to it's have that relationship. Tool. Yeah, it's a good marketing. Because we refer you because yeah. you treat us like mm -hmm. people right. rather than you know. And there right. unfortunately are yeah. vendors that don't. You're vent. You're the hired help, and yeah. you don't get anything. Yeah. And that's you, you know. I don't refer. Them I want to get a great coke way. for referral, not just on the courtesy side, but if someone's asking me who's a good caterer. Well, if I've only had a box lunch from that caterer, it's hard for me to mm -hmm. tell you right. what their um, chicken parmesan tastes like, mm -hmm. you know, unless I've had it. Mm -hmm. So if the caterer is providing me the same meals as the, as the bride and the rest of the guests are getting, then I know what it tastes like, and I can say, oh, it's delicious, yep. you know, and I can talk about it honestly as if I've had it. If all that I had was a cold test sandwich or I had a caterer that said, no, we don't provide meals, it's going to be hard to make a good referral to them. I, I know there was one instance where I went up to the bar and uh, I was at a reception facility and I said, can I get a Coke? And the bartender hands it to me and he was like, that'll be $2. And I went, um, I don't have my wallet on me, let alone <laughs> any cash. And, you know, and so it was just one of those where I said, I'm sorry here. I, I don't have any money on me and I can't go out in my car and get it. Mm -hmm. and so he was, you know, he was cool about it. He was like, you know, here, go ahead and take it for now. But if you do any more, it'll be $2. Well, I for drink. That with, you know. They want to charge me two dollars for a coke, but I could have all the beer I wanted. But yet I'm working. You know, right. they, they've got a keg. It's open bar. The keg's free, but the right. cokes are, you know, or Pepsi. The soft drinks are two dollars. And if I'm not going to drink on the job, which, you, know, I, you know, what am I supposed to do? You know, and yeah. and the bar. It was one of them rolling bars, so they didn't even have water. That wasn't an option. Mm -hmm. You know, and Mike brought up another good point is the eating in, in the room, uh, which I think that all vendors feel very uncomfortable with eating in the room with the facility, the, with the guests. But when I first started, I was, that was one of my big things. We do not eat in that room. But Mike brought up a good point where if you're supposed to be in there and you're making sure that everything is going the way it's supposed to go, it's, it's a, it's a balance. The, a key, the key always for me has been timing. Right. And, uh, you know, the, the last time that I was in a separate room was, it was basically everyone. It was the wedding coordinator, mm -hmm. it was the DJ, it was myself, it was the videographer. So we're all in there knowing that nobody else is going to be there. doing anything yeah. without the other. Right. Who's no, it was the chef, you know, taking out pictures, taking pictures, <laughs> but, <laughs> but coordinating But the concern with everything. that is, is if, all, if everyone that's keeping this reception coordinated and moving on track is in that separate mm -hmm. room, Who's minding the store? Right. Exactly. Who's making sure that the bride right. and the groom are taken <laughs> care of and that there's not some emergency mm -hmm. or catastrophe you have brewing? Bringing in yeah. booze that they shouldn't be. If, if you're out of the site, then you can't. We can't be doing our job either. Right. Um, as the DJ, I'm at the reception. I technically, yes, I could walk away. The musical play itself, but what if all of a sudden an announcement needs to be made? Right. Who wants to go track the DJ down in the room with the other vendors? So how do brides solve that? I mean, there's the obvious where you could have a vendor table in the mm -hmm. corner of a room, right. but any other suggestions on how they would solve that? I think that's what we see the most is a vendor table, you know, and maybe it's not necessarily labeled a vendor table, mm -hmm. but there's always that one table that no one's at. Reserved or, or yeah. you know. And that's probably on the best options, so you're still in the room. I think some of it is how many vendors are we talking about? Right. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of vendors where, I mean, there's plenty of receptions where it's just me and the photographer. I've got enough room mm -hmm. where I'm at to yeah. eat, and most of the time I can even share it with the photographer, mm -hmm. and I'm okay with that if they are. You know, so that's an option as well. Right. I think it really depends on are you talking one or two, or are you talking four or five? Right. Um, you know, or more. That mm -hmm. I think that makes a big difference. And I'd also, you know, check your contracts because some contracts say, you know, like a band of nine, there must be a meal provided yes, and a table in the room, you know, for that band. And so you want to know if that's not something you want at your reception, you need to check those contracts and really check the contracts and, you know, really read them. Don't just sign them. Read the fine print. Yes. Read the <laughs> fine print. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, well, thank you, and I think that just about wraps it up. 
Um, please, if you have any comments, please comment below and join us for the next Chase the Veil.